This is exercise 1.2 real numbers RD Sharma solution class 10. So the question of this uh, exercise is basically dependent or based on the HCF, finding of HCF of two integers. What we are trying to do here is we will try to solve these question using the Euclid division lemma. Now before I go ahead what is an HCF and what is LCM right. So we need to understand it. Let us take the first one first. This is 32 right. So 32 let us divide by 2. 2 16 is 32. 2 8 is 16. 2 4 is 8. 2 2 is 4. So 32 can be written as 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 right. Now let us take 54 now. I am uh, just trying to explain you the traditional method of finding the HCF, right? So we have uh, 54, so 2, uh, 2 to the 4, 2 7 to the 14, now 3, 3 9 is 27, and we have 3, 3 is 9. So now 54 can be written as 2 into 3 into 3 into 3. Now what we do here is let us make a Venn diagram like this. Okay. Uh, what are the common numbers? 2 and 2 are common. So let us write, write it here. And uh, the other numbers which are not common, let us write it here. 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. And take this is uh, for 32, this is for 54. Now for 54, it will be 3 because the other numbers which are not common, I am writing it here. So the common, the common number or the common factor 2 and 2, this is the HCF. So HCF of 32 and 54 is 2. And what will be the LCM? LCM will be the, these all numbers 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. Then the common one that is 2 is common between them. Then the leftovers of leftovers of 54 which were not common that is 3 into 3 into 3. So this multiply how, how you just have to multiply this 32 into 9, 3 is 9, 9 is 27. So you know 32 into 27 is the LCM and HCF is 2. Now this 2 we are going to find out uh, throughout this uh, exercise through Euclid lemma. So I will try to explain you one and we will be you know just uh, taking few of those. So let me take you to the first one. See, HCF of 32 and 54. Now we always know that Euclid lemma says, or Euclid division lemma says that we can have a number A if it can be represented in, in the form B into Q plus R. Right? Now here we have 32 and 54. So we are putting, we have to represent 54 in terms of 32 so here a is 54 b is 32 this q and r we don't know we have to find out so let us see how do we find out so how can we represent 54 uh, is equal to 32 into something plus some remainder this is question this is remainder right now 32 into if i multiply it by 2 32 into 2 it will be 64 so it goes uh, above than 54 so we cannot have 2 here if I put q equal to 1, so let me write it as 32 into 1. So it will be 32 into 1, that is 32. But still we have to complete 54. So how do we get this remainder? We just have to subtract 54 with 32. So 54, 32, the difference is 2 and this is, um, this, you just have to subtract this 2 for 22. So remainder is 22. Now this is done. Okay. 54 can be written in the division, division lemma form like this. Now, how do we find out the, the HCM? We will continue this again and again till the time we reach a point where the remainder is 0. When we reach the remainder as 0, this number will be the HCF. How? Now, 54 can be written as in the division level for, lemma form 32 into 1 plus 22. 
Now we, we we didn't we didn't get any remainder. So 32 has to be represented in the form of 22. Same way, we are again reapplying the division lemma. So 32 has to be written in the form of 32 is A now, 22 is B now. So how do we write it? How do you represent? Again, if you have, if I multiply 22 with 2 or 3, it will go past 32 that we don't want. So we'll multiply it by 1. What do we get? We, we need to have 10 as the remainder. So 22 into 1 plus 10 is 32, right? Still the remainder is not 0. So now a, again we'll re, reapply the division lemma. A will be 22 and B will be 10. So 22 can be represented as 10 into something plus some remainder, okay? So 10 into say 2, 20 and then 2 is the remainder. Again, we are not getting remainder as 0. Again reapply with the division lemma with a as 10 and b as 2. So 10 can be represented as say 2 into 5 plus 5 rows are 10. So we get a 0. Now we get a 0 here that is remainder is 0 and this 2 is the HCF. I hope you got the idea. This is how by applying the division lemma we get HCF as this number. Now we will take one more example say let us take the last one because all of them are same all of them, them are same right. So let me take uh, an example of 100 and 190. Do we have more? No. So let me take an example of 100 and 190. I'll again start with this. Now here we have to see which one is the greater one. 190 is greater than 100. So this has to be a, this has to be B. We are applying the Euclid division lemma. So we have to represent A in the form of B so that B have some quotient and a remainder. This is what division lemma says. So 190 has to be written in the form of 100 into something plus something so that 190 completes. So 100 into, if I multiply it by 2, it will go beyond, uh, it will be 200. So it go beyond uh, 190 that we don't want. So we'll multiply it by 1 and then what do we get? 90. 100 into 1 is 100 plus 90 is 190. So this is okay. Now here, this is A, this is B, this is your Q and this is R. So we have a division lemma. But we need to find out the HCF. So we have to go up till that point to actually get R as 0. So now this becomes A and this becomes B. We have to take this. So we have to represent 100 in the form of 90 by division lemma. So 100 we are going to take. 90 again I can multiply only 90 by 1 because if I go beyond 1 that will be going past 100 that we don't want. So 90 into 1 plus 10 right. Again the remainder is not 0. This is remainder. It is not 0. So what do we get? What? How do we do? Now this will be A. This will be B. So 90 has to be represented in the, this 10 form. So 10 into something plus something Q and R. So if I multiply 10 by 9 I get 90. So this is, that means remainder will be 0. So 10 into 90 is 90. Remainder we got 0. So what do we get? What do we get? This number is our HCF. 10 is our HCF. So this is how you are going to solve this first question. Means different parts of first question. Let us take one more. Same, same thing we have to apply. And I will tell you about uh, these three. We have later questions. How do we find out the HCF of three numbers? So the, the basic point is finding out the HCF is say 184 is there. I will not solve it. I will take you to the to other questions because we have special questions for these three or four numbers finding out the HCF of three or four numbers. You have uh, known about the traditional method which I told you first. Now I am going to tell you about the Euclid lemma. So what do we do here? 184 is there, 230 is there and 276. I am just taking an example of uh, one of the part. What we have to do here, here is we will apply the Euclid lemma in order to find HCF of this. Say HCF of this is x. Now this x, the HCF of this we will take it as, as x and now x and 120, uh, 276. We need to find out HCF of these two. So this will be the final HCF. I hope you got the idea. We'll take the questions. So this is the finding of HCF. I'm just uh, 
letting you know uh, the answers that is this is how we have to do i'll take uh, one of these say this one okay so let us take this one 867 and 255 we have already done this but just need to practice more now here what well, first first thing which we have to do here is 86 i'm taking this one others you can please take you can just solve by yourself uh, the idea which is which i'm trying to explain i'm taking one more so 867 and 225 first what we have to find out 867 and 225 are two numbers and we have to find out the hcf how do we do this the first thing first thing first is we have to find which one is the greater than so 867 is greater than 225 so this will be a this will be b now we have to present it in the form of a is equal to bq plus r this is division lemma okay and this r lies between there is a um, value which lies this r has to lie between 0 and certain value which is one of these okay it cannot go beyond that but we are trying to find out the uh, hcf at the, at that point where remainder becomes 0 this b is going to be our hcf so let us start 867 has to be represented in the form of this 225 i am writing in the place of uh, b and i don't know what to multiply let us multiply it by 3 because if i multiply by 4 it goes past 867 that we don't want so 225 into 3 and if you are not aware what to do what what has to be taken here you just subtract 867 with 225 into 3 so you get a 192 now you don't have a remainder as 0 so 225 and 192 now this is a this is b so 225 can be written as 192 into 1 because if I go multiply it by any other number, it will go past 225 that we don't want. Plus 33, right? Now, after this, what do we do? Again, we are not getting remainder as 0. So, 192 and 33. So, 192 is equal to 33 into some number, say 5. Uh, that will be, and you just subtract 192 with 33 into 5, you get 27. Again, we are not getting remainder as 0. So, 33 has to be written as 27 into 1. And subtract 20, 33 and 27 you get a 6 right now a is this b is this remainder is not 0 so 27 has to be represented in the form of 6 6 uh, 6 for the 24 plus 3 again no remainder so 6 and 3 so 6 has to be written in the form of 3 into 3 to the 6 so we get a 0 here the point you get a 0 this number as i said this b this is b b b b b b this b3 is the hcf so hcf of 867 and 220, 255 is 3 so this is how we solve it so now uh, hcf we have to find out of this is the third question of following pairs of integer and express it as a linear combination of them so here we will be backtracking backtracking means we are going to find out the hcf then the steps have to be followed backwards in order to represent in in the form of linear combination i'll tell you how to do this we'll take an example of 963 or and this say 657 okay so now i'll just show you here how this is done then i'll explain you how to write them in form of in the form of linear combination so 963 and 657 which one is in one which one is bigger 963 of course so 963 can be written as 657 into 1 plus 306 this is your a this is your b this is your q this is your r so this is following we are following the euclid's division lemma 963 can be written as 657 into 1 plus 306 because 306 is not a or not a zero remainder so 657 and 306 has to be taken as a and b so 657 can be written as 306 into 2 plus 45 again remainder is not 0 so we have to follow the same thing for with 306 and 45 so 306 is equal to 45 into 6 plus 36 again we have to take these two because remainder is not 0 45 is equal to 36 into 1 plus 9 right so now again remainder is not 0 so 36 and 9 we have to be taken 36 is equal to 9 for the 36 so we are getting 36 here with the remainder 0 so as i said this 9 will be equal to your hcf now this you have already learned by now but how to write this in the form of 
linear combination. So I'll start with nine. You just see how I backtrack. All these steps I have, I have to backtrack like this till I re reach this point. How to do this? See, the HCF is 9. So, how do I write 9? 9 is equal to, see, 9, how did, how this 9 has came? 9 has came from 45 minus 36, right? 45 minus 36. So, we can write it as 45 minus 36. I am just backtracking. 9 has come when we subtracted 45 and 36 because 45 will be represented as 36 into 1 plus 9. So, 9 is essentially equal to 45 minus 36. So, this is 45 minus 36, right? Now, let us say it as into 1 because this 36 into 1 is we have to write this proper one. 36 into 1. Now, for this 45, this is 45 minus. Now, see how did we come at that point where we are saying this 36 might have come. This 36 has come from 305 minus 45 into 6, right? So, in the place of 36, we will write 306 minus 45 into 6 because 306 minus 45 into 6 is 36. This is what we got from here. So, I am just backtracking. Other thing remains the same, right? Uh, let us expand these 45 minus 306 into 1 and minus minus is plus, so plus 45 into 6 into 1. So, 45 into 6 into 1. So, this is 45, this is 45 into 6. So, this becomes 45 into 7, right? This is 45 into 7 minus 306 into 1. Up till this point, is so it is okay. But, you see, where does this 45 has come? 45 has come from 6, 657 minus 306 into 2. So, I will write in place of 45, I will write 657 minus 306 into 2 into 7 minus 306 into 1. Now, let me expand this. This becomes 657 into 7 minus 360 into 2 into 7 minus 306 into 1. So, uh, this is 657, 306 into, uh, 306 into uh, 2 into 7 is 14. So, this is minus 360 into 14, this is minus 3, 306, sorry, this is 306, 306, 306. So, 306 into 14 minus 3, 306 into 1, so this becomes 14 and 1 is, because both are minus, so we will just add them, 306 into 15, here we have 657 into 7, right? Because of the lag of the space, I will just explain you here. Now, here this, up till this point we have reached, but how this 306 has come? How this 306 has come? 306 has come from here. It is nothing but 963 minus 65 into 1, no, 960, 657 into 1. So, in this place 306 will write 963 minus 657 into 1. So, 963 minus 657 into 1. Expand it. 963 into 15, this one, and 657 into 1 into 15, like this. Now, we have 657 here, we have 657 here, we have 15 and we have 7. So, 15 and 7, we just add them. You get 657 into 22. 657 into 22. We have taken this and this added minus, 650, minus 963 into 15. So, this is your final linear combination. I hope you got the idea. We just backtracked and we finally wrote 9 in the form of this by backtracking like this. So, I hope you will be able to solve these three. These are the uh, solutions for you. I just encourage you to solve by yourself. These are all the same way, same way. Uh, let me take, take this example, okay, so that uh, we complete this. So, 1, 2, 8, 8 and 5, 7, 5. 1, 2, 8, 8 has to be written in the form of 575. So, 575 into 2 plus 138. The remainder is not 0. Euclid lemma will apply with 575 and 138. 575 can be written as 138 into 4 plus 23. Again, no remainder. So, we will take 138 and 23. So, 138 can be written as 26, 23 into 6 and we get a 0. So, 
तो ट्वेंटी थ्री इज एच सी ना ट्वेंटी थ्री कैन बी रिटर्न एज वॉट ट्वेंटी थ्री कैन बी रिटर्न एज फाइव सेवेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी थ्री हाउ डू हाउ डू यू गेट ट्वेंटी थ्री इट इज सिम्पली फाइव सेवेंटी फाइव माइनस वन थर्टी एट इंटू फोर तो फाइव सेवेंटी फाइव माइनस वन थर्टी एट इंटू फोर इज ट्वेंटी थ्री ना हाउ डू वी गेट दिस वन थर्टी एट वन थर्टी एट वी गॉड बाय वन टू एट एट माइनस फाइव सेवेंटी फाइव इंटू टू सो इन दी प्लेस ऑफ वन थर्टी एट विल राइट दिस इन दी प्लेस ऑफ वन थर्टी एट वी आर राइटिंग वन टू एट एट माइनस फाइव सेवेंटी फोर इंटू टू दिस फोर रिमेन्स आउटसाइड ना लेट एस जस्ट एक्सपैंड इट फाइव सेवेंटी फाइव माइनस वन टू एट एट इंटू फोर माइनस 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 इज प्लस प्लस फाइव सेवेंटी फाइव इंटू एट तो दिस इज वॉट वी गेट एंड वी कैन जस्ट यू नो बिकॉज वन मोर स्टेप स्टेप कैन बी डन दिस इज फाइव सेवेंटी फाइव इंटू वन एंड दिस इज फाइव सेवेंटी फाइव इंटू एट सो वी कैन जस्ट राइट इट एज फाइव सेवेंटी फाइव इंटू नाइन माइनस वन टू एट एट इंटू फोर दिस इज दी फाइनल फॉर्म फाइंड द लार्जेस्ट नंबर विच डिवाइड सिक्स वन फाइव एंड नाइन सिक्सटी थ्री लिविंग रिमाइंडर सिक्स इन ईच केस द क्वेश्चन इज दैट देर इज अ नंबर से एक्स सो इफ इफ आई डिवाइड दिस बाई एक्स आई गेट अ रिमाइंडर एज सिक्स इफ आई डिवाइड नाइन सिक्सटी थ्री बाय एक्स आई गेट अ रिमाइंडर एज सिक्स सो हाउ टू फाइंड दिस एक्स देर इज वन मोर थ्योरी हेयर That if I subtract six from six one five, this x is going to divide it fully. If I subtract six from nine sixty three, I will get a proper zero when I divide nine sixty three minus six by x. Exactly this what we are going to do here is we'll take six one five subtract six from here we get the zero six zero nine. We'll take nine sixty three subtract a six from here we get nine fifty seven. Now this these are the two numbers. when they are divided with a certain number this number x is going to divide both of them so that means we are trying to find out the hcf so we'll try to find out the out the hcf of 609 and 957 so now hcf of 609 and 957 will apply the euclid division lemma how to find the uh, euclid division lemma 957 is greater so we'll write 957 in the form of 609 so 957 will be 609 into 1 plus 348 okay Now these two we have to take because remainder is not zero. Six zero nine can be written as three four eight into one plus two sixty one. Again, we didn't get the zero, so we'll reapply this Euclid with three four eight and two sixty one. Three four eight is equal to two six two sixty one. This is two sixty one, I guess. Three forty eight two sixty one. Yeah, it's two sixty one. So now two sixty one. And eighty-seven again, we have to reapply. So two sixty-one becomes eighty-seven into three. We get a zero here. So eighty-seven is the HCF. So eighty-seven is that X. This is the number which will divide six one five subtracted by six and nine sixty-three subtracted by six totally fully. Uh, If the HCF of four zero eight and one zero three two is accessible, uh, accessible, or you can say ex, you can express is in the in in the equation form one zero three two m minus four zero eight into five. We have to find m, so it becomes quite easy here. We just have to find out the uh, HCF of these two numbers, and when we find out the HCF of this number, say it is x, so we'll just equate it with one zero three two. Minus four zero eight into five. This is what we have to do. So now we are aware how to find out the HCF. We'll we'll just quickly jump into finding the HCF. We know that one zero three two and four zero eight, which is the higher number, one zero three two. So one zero three two will be represented as four zero eight into some number plus some number. That is the division lemma. So one zero three two is four zero eight into two plus two sixteen. We go uh, till the, till the time we get an HCF as uh, means the remainder as zero. So we get an HCF. So four zero eight can be written as two one six plus some remainder. Two one six and one ninety two will take. Two one six will be equal to one ninety two into one plus twenty four. No remain, no remainder zero. Then we'll reapply one ninety two and twenty four. So one ninety two is twenty four into eight. We get a zero. So twenty four is our HCF. As I said, we'll just equate twenty four with one zero three two minus four hundred and eight into five. So when we solve this, we get m equal to two. Let me solve it for you. Twenty four. Is equal to one zero three two m minus four zero eight into five. Four zero eight into five is two zero four zero. Now take this two zero four zero this side. 
So you get 24 minus plus 2040 equal to 1032M. 24 plus uh, 2040 is uh, 2064. 1032M. Now take 1032 in the denominator. So M is what? 2. So M is 2 here. Same thing, if the HCF of these two numbers is expressible in the form of this, we have to find out x. So, we will try to find out the HCF of 657 and 963 using division lemma and then we just equate it with this number. So, here I hope that you will be able to find out by this method, 9 will be your HCF. So, you just have to equate 9 with 657x plus 963x minus 15. And we have to solve for x, and this is the solution. X is x will be your 22. An army contingent of 616 member is to march behind an army band of 32 members in a parade. So there is a band and there is an army army contingent. Now, what is happening here is the two groups are in the same number of columns. So this say we just have to equate them. So, if there are say 3 columns here, it has to be 3 columns here. If there are 30 columns here, it has to be 30 columns here. So, what is the maximum number of columns in which they can march? So, essentially we have to find out the highest common factor in terms of la this lanes or you can say columns. So, we will take 616 and 32, find out the HCF. So, 616 and 32, let us find out the HCF using the Euclid lemma. 616 can be written as 32 into 9, 19 plus 8. Now we will take 32 and 8. So 32 can be written as 8 into 4. So we get a 0. 8 is our HCF. So we have maximum number of columns or the lanes as 8 in which they can march. A merchant has 120 liters of oil of one kind, 180 liters of another, 240 liters of third kind. He wants to sell the oil by filling the three kinds of oil in tins of equal capacity. So these are three cans or three tins of equal capacity. What should be the greatest capacity of such a tin? So when it comes greatest, that means it is highest. Highest is nothing but highest, common. Common means these three are there and we need to have a common value and factor which pertains to all these three. So we have to find out the HCF of these three. So how do we find out the HCF of these three? First of all, say 120, three different oils are there, 120, 180 and 240. So let us take 120 and 180. 180, 120 and 180, which one is the bigger? 180 is the bigger. So, 180 can be represented as 120 into 1 plus 60. So, now the remainder is not 0. So, we will take again 120 and 60. 120 is simply 60 into 2 plus 0. So, this 60 is the HCF of 120 and 80. Now, what do we do? We have already got the HCF of these two numbers. So, we will take this HCF and 240. And then we will try to find out the HCF of these two numbers. That will be the final HCF or the capacity of the tank or tin. So, 240 can be represented as 16 to 4 plus 0. So, we get a 0 at the very first time. So, 60 is our 60 is our uh, divisor. So, this 60, this is 60. 60 is the HCF. This tin should be or each tin should be of 60 liters. During a sale, color pencils were being sold in a pack of 24 each and crayons in the pack of 32 each. So, 24 each Color pencils and 32 each crayons. Say pencils and crayons. If you want uh, full packs of both and the same number of pencils and crayons, how many of each would you need to buy? So, what we are trying to do here is we are trying to fix them in one so that equal number of pencils and these crayons can be there. So, he, here we are trying to find out the LCM. LCM. Okay. So, what is the LCM of 24 and 32? Uh, let me tell you how to do this. 24 and 32. The simpler method is like this. Just take these two and start dividing. 2, 12 and 2, uh, 16. Then 2, 2, 6 is 12, 2, 8 is 16. Now, let us apply 2 again. 2, 3 is 6, 2, 4 is 8. And then 2. So, 2 to the 4, 3 remains here. So, 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 3 into 2, which is this one. So, 96 is our LCM. This is how. You just have to multiply all these numbers, you get an LCM. 
So now 96 is the LCM, the least number of both colors that needs to be purchased or that can be purchased is 97. Now how to find out the number of packs of pencil to be bought? You just divide 96 with what is the number here? 24. Divide by 24. So you get a number of packs of pencils as 4. How to find out the packs for crayons? 96 is the LCM. Divide it by uh, 32. So you get as 3. So 3 are the number of packs of crayons. 144 cartons of Coke cans and 90 cartons of Pepsi can cans are to be stacked in a canteen. So we have 144 Coke cans and 90 as Pepsi cans. They are stacked in a canteen. If each stack is of the same height and is to contain cartons of same drink, what would be the greatest number of cartons each stack would have? Now the question is asking about the greatest number. That is your, it is asking about the highest. And there are two different entities, two different numbers. So we need to find out the common one on, on this because we have to stack it on the, on the shelf. So we have to find out the HCF of 144 and 90. So 144 and 90 is there. You just find out the HCF. You know by now how to find out the HCF using, using Euclid lemma. This HCF will be 18. This is the greatest number of cartons in one stack will be 18. The next question is the greatest number which divides this and this, leaving remainder 9 and 7 respectively. So we have already seen a question like this. So what we have to do here is we, if we divide x or 285 by x and 1249 by x and uh, the remainder here will be 9 and here will be 7. So what do we do? We subtract 285 with 9 and uh, we subtract 7 from here. Then the number which comes, x is going to divide them both. So this strategy will uh, employ. First of all, we'll subtract 9 from 285 and 7 from 1249 in order to get a number which will which is divisible by both are divisible by this x. So what is this x? This is basically the HCF. So we have to find out the HCF of 276 and 1242. So 1242 can be represented in the form of 276 using Euclid division lemma. You get 138 here. And uh, 276 and 138 has to be taken because there is no zero remainder here. So 276 is simply 138 into 2. This is zero. So 138 is our HCF. Or you can say this is the number. This is the number which is going to divide these two. These two and the remainders will be 9 and 7. Find the largest number which exactly divides 280 and 1245. Leaving remainders 4 and 3. So just subtract 4 from here. There will be a number. Subtract 3 from here. You, there will be a number. These two numbers 276 and 1242. They are divided by a single number x. And this number has to be the HCF. So we will find out the HCF of 276 and 1242. 1242 has to be represented with respect to uh, taking the idea of Euclid division lemma in this form. And we get HCF as 138. What is the largest number which divides this, this, this? Three numbers are there and then the remainders are 1, 2, 3. So same strategy we will employ, subtract because we have to have find a number x so that it divides 626 minus 1 and 13127 minus 2 and 15628 minus 3 totally. So we, this is, this x has to be the HCF of these three numbers. And these three numbers when we subtract, see when we subtract these numbers from 626 subtract 1, from 3127 subtract 2, 15628 subtract 3, we have, we have subtracted the remainders from these numbers and now these three numbers which we get, we have to find a common number which divides all these three and that will only be the HCF. So HCF we need to find out. So how do we do it? We will take these two numbers first and we will try to find out the HCF of these two and then the HCF whichever it comes. This number and this number, we will find out the HCF of these two numbers. That will be the final HCF of the, these three numbers. So 3125 is simply uh, 625 into 5. So the first go only we get a 0. So 625 is the HCF of 625 and 3125. Now 625 is now HCF of these two numbers. Now we will take 625 and 15625. Again we get 6. If we represent 15625 using Euclid division lemma in the form of 625, 
into 25 we get 625 as the hcf so hcf is the hcf is for all these three and this is the number which which uh, divides these three and giving the remainder as 1 2 and 3 Find the greatest number that will divide these three leaving remainder 4, 5, 6. So same thing we are going to do. We will subtract 4 from here, 2, 5 from here and 6 from here. And these three numbers which we get, we are trying to find out the HCF. So how to find the HCF? We already know by Euclid division lemma. We will take these two numbers first. The first HCF will be 63. Now this 63 and 5, 693, two numbers we have taken. The HCF of these two numbers is 63. Now we will take this 63 and 693. So let us take these two and we will find out that again 63 comes as the HCF of these two numbers also. So 63 is the HCF or the number which divides these three and uh, leaving the remainder as 4, 5, 6. Find the greatest number which divides these two leaving remainder 9 and 5. So subtract 9 from here, 5 from here. There are two numbers, find out the HCF. So subtract 9, 5, find out the HCF, 154 will be HCF. I hope that you are not aware of how to do this. Two brands of chocolates are available in the pack of 24 and 15. If I need to buy an equal number of chocolates of both kinds, what is the least number of boxes of each kind I would need to buy? Now in this case, the question itself says you have to find out the least number of boxes. That means you have to find the LCM. So 24 and 15 is there, find out the LCM of 24 and 15. I already told you how to find out the LCM. Let me do it again for you. So here 3, 8 is a 24 and 3, 5 is a 15 and just multiply 3, 8 and 5. So you get 120, 120 is the LCM. Now how to find out the number of boxes? 120 divided by 24 gives you the number of packet of first brand. So divide by 24. You get first brand that is 5 and divide 120 by the second one 15. You get the number of packets of second brand that is 8. A mason has to fit a bathroom with square marble tiles of the largest possible size. The size of the bathroom is 10 feet by 8 feet. What would be the size of in inches of the tile required that has to be cut and how many such tiles are required? So if this is the size. Say 10 by 8. So in these two, uh, first we have to find out the number of tiles and what is the size of the tile. Size is 10 feet by 8 feet. We will convert it into inches. Just multiply these two by 12. So it is 120 by 96. So this is in inches. It will be 120 and this will be 96. Right. Now let us find out the HCF of these two. Highest common factor using Euclid division lemma. When we find out the HCF, we get HCF as 24. You know how to do it now. So 24 is the largest size of tile which is required, 24 inches. Now how many you can find out? See, the whole area is 120 into 96. And what is the size of one tile? If it is 24, this is 24, it is 24 by 24. So when you divide the size of uh, whole area by size of one tile, you get the number of tiles that is 20 tiles. 15 pastries and 12 biscuits packets have to be uh, has been donated for a school fate. These are to be packed in several smaller identical boxes with the same number of pastries and biscuits packets in each. How many biscuit packets and how many pastries will each box contain? So here number of pastries are 15, number of biscuit packets are 12 and by the question it, it is very clear that we have to find out the HCF of these two. So finding the HCF see. 15 can be represented in the form of 12 like this. This is A, this is B, this is Q, this is R. So you get 12 into 1 plus 3. So this is, uh, again, uh, we have to do it for 12. So 12 is 3 into 4 plus 0. So what do we get? We get 3 as the number of boxes, which is the HCF. And in order to find out the how many box, you can easily find out. See, uh, 15 divided by 3 and 15 divided by uh, 12, 12 divided by 3. So 5 are the pastries and 3 fourths of 4 are the biscuits. 104 goats, 140 donkeys and 170, 175 cows have to be taken across the river. 
there is only one boat which uh, will have to make many trips in order to do so the lazy boatman has his own condition for transporting them he insists that he will take the same number of animals in every trip and have they have to be of same kind so he will naturally like to take the largest possible each number each time can you tell how many animals went to each trip so by the question it is clear that there are three different types of animals and they he just want to take same number of elements every uh, animals every trip and this is simply he is uh, trying to say that i will take the hcf only so 205 140 175 let us take these two numbers first 105 and 140 find out the hcf you get 35 now take 35 and now 175 these two have hcf as 35 now take 35 and 175 find out the hcf you get 35 as the hcf of all of these the length breadth and height of a room are 8 uh, by 8 8 meter 25 cm so we'll convert them them into cm so it will be 825 6 meter 75 cm 4 meter 50 cm determine the longest rod which can measure the length uh, that is the three dimension of the room exactly so again we have to find out the hcf of these three because we are trying to talk about this length breadth height so we have to have a scale the longest rod which measures the length also the breadth also and the height also right so 8 meter 25 cm is simply 8 meter is 800 cm right and 25 cm is 25 so 800 plus 25 cm is 8 825 then we have 600 plus 25 and 400 plus 50 so 825 625 and 450 450 is the longest rod first we will take these two say any of these you can take you can take these two and find out the hcf you get hcf as i know that you'll be able to find out hcf by now the hcf is uh, 225 here right you get hcf as 225 now let us take 225 and 825 now 825 and 225 find out the hcf of these two you get 75 and so this is the longest length of rod which can be used to measure the three dimensions express the hcf of these two as this one where x and y are integers in two different ways So what we have to do here is we have to backtrack. How to do the backtracking? We need to find, first find out the HCF. So 468 and 222 because 468 is greater than 222 will apply the Euclid lemma. This will be your A. This will be your this will be your B. This is your uh, Q and this is your R. R. So 468 is 222 into 2 plus 24 and 222 is uh, can be written as 24 into 9 plus 6. Now 24 and 6 will take. 24 will be 6 into 4 plus 0. You get a remainder as 0. So 6 is your HCF. Now we have to backtrack. We have to write this. We have to somehow get this form. How to get this form? 6 was how how this 6 has come. 6 has come from 222 minus 24 into 9. So this has can be written as 6 can be written as 222 minus 24 into 9. From here, if you take 24 into 9 this side, you get 6. Now this twenty four has come from where? Twenty four has come from four sixty eight minus two twenty two into two. So in place of four four sixty eight, this twenty four will be writing two four four sixty eight minus two twenty two into two. Now let us expand this four sixty eight into nine and two twenty two into two into nine. That is eighteen. So for this, let us add this two twenty two into eight and two twenty two. This becomes two twenty two into nine in nineteen. And four sixty eight into nine is already there. So here, if you see that uh, this six. Can be written as two twenty two into y. So what is what is y? It is nineteen. And four sixty eight into x. So what is x? It will be minus nine. So x is minus nine and y is nineteen. So this is all about the question and answer of one point two. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself.